Okay, topic 1.2 is called factoring, and that's on pages 6 to 17. Again, our curriculum outcome, there isn't really one in the curriculum guide. However, um, you need to know all this stuff in order to excel at calculus this year. Our lesson objectives, there's only two. And number one is to recall the many different ways to factor an expression. And number two is to apply factoring techniques to questions that are more difficult than we've seen in the past. So you have to remember that when we're talking about factoring something, it's really just breaking it down to the things or factors that were multiplied together to get to that end product to begin with. So you have to remember some of our previous methods of factoring. The first one is called removing a greatest common factor. And the only new thing is that you're going to be asked to remove a greatest common factor that might be a fraction, or it could be a variable with a negative exponent and a or a fraction as an exponent. So here's our first one. If we're going to take out a greatest common factor here, we have two fifths x squared minus 10 x. Well, to take out a greatest common factor, it might be easier for you to write the second term with the same denominator. So if we have two fifths x squared, we could rewrite this as um, 50 fifths x. And then our greatest common factor is actually going to be 2 fifths as well as x. And what we'll have left over is x minus, and that would be 25, because we took out a 2 fifths. Our second one here is x plus 7 plus 6 to the x minus, times x to the negative 1. So here, the only greatest common factor we can take out is going to be a variable. Now, in the past, when we had something like, uh, if we just go up here, um, x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x, your greatest common factor that we could take out here is just x. It's your variable that has the smallest exponent. So if we apply that concept here, um, our smallest exponent is x to the negative 1, because that is a negative 1. That is smaller than 1, or this would be like x to the 0. So if we take out x to the negative 1, what you need to always be aware of is um, what happens after we multiply this thing back in. So if we were to multiply this thing back in, we need to get back to our original expression. So I would say then that this first term now turns into x squared, because if I were to multiply this back in, I need to add the exponents, and negative 1 plus 2 is 1. We have a 7 here, and that's going to be 7x, because when we multiply this in, we add the exponents, negative 1 and positive 1 is 0. And here we would just have a regular 6. So combining that into one big question, and we're going to add some fractional exponents as well, or some rational exponents. Um, we need to take out a greatest common factor in these two things. So again, first off, I see a fraction in front here. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this first term so it also has the same denominator. So 2 becomes 8 fourths. And then we have a to the 7 over 2, b to the negative half minus a quarter, a to the half, b to the 5 halves. Now I could take out a greatest common factor it would be a quarter. And what else I can take out is um, an a. Now we take a look at both exponents on a, and we see that the exponent is going to be a half, because we take out the one with the smallest exponent. So a half is less than seven halves. And with b, we're going to take out a negative half, because a negative half is definitely smaller than five over two. Now we need to know what we have left over. Well, what we have left over We've taken out a quarter, so this is just 8. On the a, what we have left over is a to the power of something. So it was going to be a half. If we multiply this back in, we have to get back to 7 halves. So that means we will be with 6 halves here, a to the power of 6 halves, because when we add this together, we need to get 7 halves. Um, b to the power of negative half is what we took out, so we don't have any b's left in this first term. We're going to subtract that. From here, we've got uh, a quarter. And we took out that quarter, so we just have a 1. Um, we have a to the half, which we also took out, so we don't have any a's. But we do have a b. And this will be b to the 6 over 2. Because when I multiply this in, I need to add these exponents. So that means I'm going to have 5 over 2 as my final exponent. And now I get a quarter, a to the half, b to the negative half, and we have 8a cubed minus b cubed. Now, you may recognize this part right here as a difference of cubes. 
and we're going to talk about how we factor a difference of cubes in one second. So factoring other types of polynomials. So you have to remember that if there's three terms, you should try either inspection or decomposition. And we used inspection when we had no number in front of our x squared. So we basically had a one in front of our x squared term. We could use inspection. And that's just finding two factors, two numbers that multiply together to give you C and add together to give you B. Now decomposition we used when we did have a term in front or a number, sorry, in front of our x squared term. If there's more than three terms, you might want to try grouping. So if there was four terms, you could have uh, term one, two, three, and four. You might want to group these two terms together, see if you can take out a greatest common factor, group these two terms together and do the same sort of thing. And synthetic division, remember, is using that long L and that came in quite handy when you're factoring longer polynomials. Now, if there's only two terms, you should see if you could factor them as a difference of squares or a sum or difference of cubes. So here's some formulas for difference of squares and, and some are differences of cubes. X squared minus Y squared is can be factored as X minus Y and X plus Y. Remember that you cannot factor a sum of squares. So X squared plus Y squared cannot be factored. Now, in terms of sums and differences of cubes, if it's a difference of cubes, X cubed minus Y cubed, it gets factored out as X minus Y x squared plus xy plus y squared. And if it's a sum of cubes, it's x cubed plus y cubed. Those two factors will then be x plus y times x squared minus xy plus y squared. So what's new is that even if your binomial doesn't have perfect squares of cubes in it, you can still factor it like a perfect square or a perfect cube. For example, x squared minus 20. Well, you can factor that as x minus root 20 and x plus root 20. You just have to remember that we need simplified roots in our answers. So this would be 2 root 5, and this would be also 2 root 5. So one of the problems that you're going to face is that you need to know when to stop factoring, because you might be able to factor, continue factoring these things. And so one of the rules that we follow is that we'll never take the square root of the variable. So once we get just a plain old x inside the brackets, then we are done factoring. In the text, you'll see that they use terminology like factor over x, e, and then they'll have either an r in here, or they might have a q. So x, e, r means that your answers here can be any uh, rash or any number, any real number. So for example, that question we just did right up here, these would be factored over the realm of real numbers, because 2 root 5 is a real number. Whereas x, e, q is just talking about rational numbers. So you can't you can't have uh, roots and you can't have re uh, repeating decimals. You can only use fractions. So a couple examples to get going here. We're going to factor the following over r. So x squared minus 3. If we factor it, it would just be x minus root 3 and x plus root 3. We can't simplify that any further. x to the fourth minus 4. Well, x to the fourth minus 4 could be x squared minus 2 and x squared plus 2. Now, we can continue to factor this first one because um, this can be factored like a difference of squares. So then we get x minus root 2 and x plus root 2. And we can't forget that there was this x squared plus 2 still there. Now, we can't factor this because it's not a difference of, of squares, it's a sum of squares, and sums of squares cannot be factored. If we're looking at this last one, x cubed plus 10, well, we can factor that like a sum of cubes. So in the sum of cubes, we just take the cube root of the first two terms. So we get x plus cube root of 10. And then we follow a pattern where we square this first term, that's x squared. We can square this last term and put it in here. Well, that's going to be the cube root of 100, because that's what 10 squared is. And then we multiply these two things together. So then we get x times cube root of 10. So in summary, you need to use your basic factoring skills to get most of these questions started. Then you can also apply the new methods that you learned today. So remember the, to remove a GCF or a greatest common factor, you might have a rational coefficient, you might have a fraction in front, and you could have negatives and fractions in the exponent. If you're looking at three terms, you're probably going to want to try inspection and decomposition. If you're looking at more than three terms, 
you might want to try grouping in synthetic division. If you're looking at two terms, you want to try and factor it as a difference of squares or a sum and or difference of cubes. So your assignment is on pages 15 to 17. You could do questions 1 to 8 and 10 to 14. Now there's a lot of uh, sub questions in here, so you don't have to do them all, obviously. Just try a couple from each, um, each number. Um, and good luck, and we'll see you in class.